and welcome to this RetailX e-commerce world review webinar, which we're going to be discussing the newly launched RetailX 2023 Benelux Region Report. I'm Emma Herod, an editor at Internet Retailing and RetailX and author of the report. I'm joined today by Holly Parker of Avalara. She's agreed to share insights into this region and some of the topics that are covered in the report. So, Hi Holly, um, thank you for joining us and can I ask you to briefly introduce yourself and Avalara? Of course, thank you so much for having me Emma. Um, my experience across the last nine years or so has been um, supporting businesses with cross-border expansion. So the majority of my time I've been in the logistics industry, uh, but now I'm part of Avalara's cross-border solutions team. Um, I've been with Avalara for a year and a half now, um, and our focus is primarily to sort, uh, support businesses of all sizes to simplify their tax compliance. So Avalara auto automated solution is cloud-based and it allows businesses to concentrate on uh, penetrating new markets like the Benelux um, and have an Avalara manage the complexities of their global tax compliance um, in the background. We're really excited to sponsor this report uh, and join you today on the webinar. The Benelux is a great example of retail without borders, um, relying on cooperation and mutual benefits. It's a union that encourages and inspires cross-border trade and an environment which retailers can really thrive in. Well, thanks, Holly. We'll get on to some of those issues around cross-border trade in a bit as we pick up on some of the key points from the report. Um, the Benelux Union itself and looking further into the individual countries. But there is loads of data in the report, including graphs on population structures, number of internet users versus people who shop online, consumer preferences around payments, channel mix, sustainability, things like that. Um, people who haven't seen the report yet, there'll be a link at the end of the webinar showing you where to get that from. So if we start off, Three countries of the Benelux region, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, founding members of the European Union, first adopters of the euro. So they've got a history of political closeness that highlights the intergovernment, so intergovernmental relationship between them, um, with some seeing the region as a living example of how the EU could be working. The three countries have been cooperating closely since before the formation of the EU, since um, the middle of the 20th century, ensuring free movement of goods, people, services and money. As a deeper insight into the e-commerce market at both the regional and individual level sort of highlights this fact and it reveals a region that benefits from high internet usage, a significant proportion of the population shop online, um, also has a high GDP per capita, which is above average for the rest of Europe. Um, in fact, Luxembourg is one of the richest countries in the world. And we have a slide to show how inflation has been changing um, over the past year or so. So it shows Luxembourg is not immune to rising inflation. Can I just bring in Holly? Can you tell us more about the challenges that retailers selling in Benelux are facing due to what's been happening with inflation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so consumers are a lot less loyal due to inflation and will understandably be more mindful about their spending to make their money count. They're expecting and they're demanding transparency at the checkout um, and they won't accept discrepancies related to things like currency conversion. Um, so if you're looking to expand your business within the Benelux, you'll have to meet customer expectations. Um, they're used to purchasing from local bordering countries. So the norm for them is fast delivery times with no unexpected import duties. Um, so if you're a business based and fulfilling outside of the EU and you're looking to target um, this market, then you'll need to consider um, your delivery partner for one having a fast delivery solution with convenient delivery options and notifications is going to be key to compete with those local options. Um, you'll also need to consider the fact that 
you'll have import duties and taxes um, on all shipments. So anything under the value of 150 euros is going to attract VAT. Uh, and anything over that threshold will then also um, incur import duties as well, which can be quite a barrier um, for consumers that are not used to paying those additional fees. So one thing to be aware of that's quite a, ben a beneficial scheme for businesses operating outside the EU and wanting to ship into um, those EU countries is a scheme called Import One Stop Shop. Um, and that's a simplified program where you would collect any import VAT up front um, from the customer at your checkout. You charge the right um, local VAT. Um, and then you'd have a simplified registration, which Avalara can support you with um, and file a consolidated uh, tax return across all 27 EU countries. So that massively simplifies your operation in that market um, and removes the barrier of additional fees up to 150 um, euros. That also has a trickle on effect into the delivery timeframes because you weren't waiting when that gets to destination country for your consumer to pay that, that local VAT upon import. Um, so it's a massive benefit. And then I would say um, if your goods or your average basket value is over 150 euros, then you'd need to consider um, potentially adopting a duties and taxes paid model because that's when you, you not only have the VAT element, but also the import duties as well. Um, being transparent about these fees at the checkout or potentially including them in the product cost is going to be um, a way to remove that barrier and compete with, with local options. Um, so Avalara can definitely support with both the IOSS registration, the import one-stop shop, um, but we can also provide solutions to businesses that are looking to do a delivery duty paid model uh, by classifying their goods accurately um, and calculating import fees um, within the checkout. That's interesting that you mentioned um, simplification for retailers there, because that's something that consumers are looking for as well. The sort of all the technicalities behind e-commerce, consumers want um, simple or want to easily be able to go online to buy what they're looking for. They don't want any friction in the purchasing process, whether that's through how they pay or how they actually um, receive their goods. We look here, I've got the chart showing the largest 100 retailers across the Benelux region. Um, and it's interesting to see the large amount of traffic that goes to marketplaces and in fact, marketplaces themselves actually account for almost half of the businesses within this retail X listing. Um, consumers like sort of that simple way of being able to shop online to be able to compare prices. Um, they also like to shop on multi-sector sites. Um, as we look at the web traffic, 54% goes to marketplaces, 27% to brands, and 19% goes to retailers. And a similar picture is seen in the three countries individually as well, um, with marketplaces over-indexing the level of web traffic they receive can prepared, so compared to the proportion of the largest 100 that they actually make up. One marketplace that needs mentioning within the Benelux region is Amazon. It has only recently launched dedicated sites there in recent years. Um, previously, consumers were buying from sites in other countries, such as France and Germany. Um, Amazon launched in the Netherlands March 2020. Belgium, they only launched in last year. But already, Amazon is among the top five retailers in the Netherlands. It's opened up a distribution centre in the country this year um, rather than fulfilling orders from Germany, which it was previously doing. Um, another marketplace really, though, of prominence in the region is Bol.com. They have a leading position, um, both in terms of transactions and traffic, but also, I think, to some extent, within the hearts of consumers in the Netherlands. Um, again, large proportion of this largest 100 are headquartered outside the region. Amazon 
being won. So they're also amongst the leaders of cross-border um, retailing as well. If we move on to the next slide, um, no Benelux region thriving e-commerce market, as we've mentioned, spearheaded by retailers in the Netherlands, which is also the largest market by terms of how much consumers are actually spending. Its proximity, shared language with northern Belgium means that retailers dominate within Belgium as well. Multiple languages spoken in Belgium and Luxembourg, membership of the EU. We've also already mentioned the reduced barriers for cross-border trade. So it's all opens up this market for global brands to enter into the region, enter into the individual countries, whether they distribute their products from within Benelux or neighbouring countries. Um, Holly, what advice would you give to retailers selling in Benelux to be successful against these big international brands that also want a share of the market? Great question. Um, I'd say even though there's more cross-border trade in the Benelux than other regions, um, having a desirable product at an appealing price is only going to get you so far. So you'd mentioned um, the opening up of the Amazon um, distribution centre within the region. And there they're prioritising that piece that I touched on earlier around the delivery timeframes. Um, so that's it's an expectation and it's not just a trend that we see in the Benelux. Um, it's a trend globally. Um, my key pieces of advice um, when converting cross-border sales would be, firstly, I would say um, creating the right technology stack, um, looking at your business systems and the partners you're going to be engaging because they need to be able to support you with automation as you grow into these new markets. Um, and again, you, you really need to look at the quality of the data that you're going to be providing. So, for example, if you are going to be um, fulfilling orders internationally cross-border, um, if there is going to be that duty element, then you need to make sure you've got the right foundations for those calculations. So do you have the right um, HS code for your product catalogue? And if that's, um, as you mentioned, marketplaces, there could be a huge amount of different uh, products that are in your catalogue. And you need to make sure that you've got the right data to ensure that accurate um, duty calculation. And then, um, as you mentioned earlier, I would say as much as possible, focus on removing those pain points from the customer's experience. So um, you've already mentioned it, Emma, people are buying online because it's quick, it's easy. Um, they can look at which, which products are going to be most cost effective for them to purchase. Um, and you need to make sure that that buying experience, as well as the delivery experience, is easy quick and the customers regularly um, updated. But when competing, like you say, with those um, local bordering countries where uh, there's language, language crossover and um, potentially a payment option crossover and things like that, those are things that need to be considered. Um, are you making it as easy as possible? Do you have the right language, payment option, transparent fees, etc.? Absolutely. Um if we move on and have a look at the individual countries, um, as mentioned, Netherlands, the largest e-commerce market in Benelux, both in terms of consumer spend and number of the leading retailers within the region. Um, the amount the consumers in the Netherlands spend online with fashion retailers is almost the same as the total Belgian e-commerce market, for example. Um, that's not to disregard Belgian market or the one in Luxembourg, if you're looking to enter into the region, um, they all have significant areas. Um, the Dutch E-Commerce Association believes that 30% of all retail purchases in the Netherlands will be made online by 2030. So again, they may be mature e-commerce markets compared to some other regions where e-commerce is still relatively immature and has got huge growth potential but these are markets that are still growing and we look look at the saturation of how far online has penetrated into the different retail categories different product markets um 
e-commerce in the Netherlands has reached a tipping point where almost as many consumers say they prefer to shop online as people who have a distinct preference for shopping in bricks and mortar stores. There's only a one percentage point difference between the two groups. Uh, 31% prefer shopping bricks and mortar versus 30% online. Um, that was a survey done by payment platform Klarna. Um, this is actually quite a major milestone for the Netherlands. Um, it's a 4% year on year increase in consumers preferring to shop online. So the country is transforming. The younger generations are more likely to reach for an internet connected device when shopping rather than going into a physical store or using that, using an online, um, sorry, using their phone or whatever when they're actually in a physical store to find out more information about the products they're looking at or comparing prices. Um, online shopping is growing strongly. The majority of Dutch people still think, though, that the overall shopping experience in physical stores is better. So that's something that retailers need to be aware of and to continue innovating with the actual experience that they're giving to shoppers online and across channels. Moving on, looking at Belgium. Um, Consumers in Belgium like the social aspects of shopping in bricks and mortar stores, um, but they're also drawn to shopping online with the standard factors that are common across many countries, time saving, convenience and price. But what's interesting, though, is that um, retailers in Belgium are having to work really hard to attract new customers at the moment. 40% of consumers in Belgium say that they have three favourite sites when they're looking to buy something within a specific product category and they're unlikely to look elsewhere when buying those items. A third of shoppers will only look at one site when they have a particular purchase in mind. So it's shown that customers are very loyal. 70% um, will return to the same e-commerce site for repeat purchases rather than looking elsewhere. So retailers will have to work hard to try and attract new customers. They also have to work hard at retaining that loyalty. So I don't think any of this can be taken as given, looking at the competitiveness of the market and those international brands wanting to join in. Moving on, quickly looking at Luxembourg. We've talked about cross-border trade. Consumers here are even more likely to be shopping across borders rather than with domestic retailers. All of Luxembourg's largest 100 retailers are headquartered elsewhere. And of these, the largest of that group receive 91% of the web traffic, as you can see from the, um, the pie chart down on the bottom right hand corner. Much of the growth of online shopping coming from mobile commerce. Unsurprisingly, it's on the rise in most countries. Consumers, particularly the younger ones, will pick up their smartphone instead of turning to a desktop, desktop device when they're shopping. In Luxembourg, mobile commerce accounts for more than 40% of online spend. Belgium and the Netherlands, similar rates of mobile shopping versus shopping on desktop devices, but it is slightly lower. In Belgium, um, it's about 37% of the overall market compared to the 41% that we're seeing here in Luxembourg. So understandably then that retailers are developing their retail models around the rise of online, rise of mobile commerce, introducing omni-channel services such as click and collect, um, being mobile first. But also mobile phones are having an impact on the wider landscape on payments. So Holly, can I just bring you back in here and explain to um, explain what you're seeing here in this area of payments and mobile? I'd, I'd say whether the consumer is, is buying from a mobile device or a desktop, um, the checkout process is a key part of the customer experience. 
Um, while we see some level of abandoned cart rate as normal, if you've got a high abandoned cart rate, that's usually an indicator that there's something wrong in that process and it needs to be reviewed. Um, I would say it's, it's important to understand how your customers are shopping and how they're purchasing, what's relevant to them, and that is going to promote growth in those regions. Um, it's important to build your capabilities responsibly and use trusted vendors and implement secure platforms um, that can safeguard your customers' data. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Holly, for joining me. I'll just bring up on the screen, there's a link there for anybody who wants to download the report if you haven't done so already. If you have any questions for me about the report or for Holly about Avalara, um, or if you want to be included in any future retail X research, please do get in touch with us. Um, again, thank you very much, Holly.